So you want to get into almost production. Well, one of the simplest ones you will do will be uh, dead sea salt. Here I have uh, 150 grams measured by weight. And you don't have to buy it in big containers like this, but if you get into it, you can buy it in the, these larger containers imported from the internet. I'll just put that aside. Um, but I found that 150 grams in about a litre of, of water uh, is a manageable amount uh, to work with. Now what you will be needing for your main precipitation is uh, sodium hydroxide uh, which comes as caustic soda of various descriptions. You could buy that in the department store and that will be usually dry flakes or dry powder and you can mix that up into by weight a third in water. So, uh, so there, I've made up uh, amounts, a third by weight so 30% solution and I find that works well because I buy my hydrochloric acid which we'll talk about later and it's already comes as a solution uh, made up to 30% so it helps my headspace to have them both the same and having made my 30% solution then I also make a, a, a smaller amount of 10% of that and the reason for that is that uh, sometimes these reactions go quite fast towards the end and it's handy to make change over to a more dilute solution and having it as a 10% solution helps again in your head knowing how much you've actually put in so I don't keep I usually record what I do for future reference and it helps uh, to know that that is a tenth of, of that of one you know, a point so it's easy to calculate in your head if you put one mil of this in it's the equivalent of point uh, one of a mil of that if I put more or less two drops of this and it's equivalent to 0.01 of that and that really helps I know roughly how fast this reaction goes so I've already pre-loaded uh, two syringes which I like to use uh, of 100 mil each and we'll proceed from there other things that you need uh, you'll need a trusty little pH meter I would never advise anyone to go with pH uh, papers uh, it's way too difficult these things are like you know less than 10 bucks on the internet and a, a spatula something to to stir that mix with so I've already preloaded this is 150 grams of dead sea salt dissolved in this mixture and now I'm just going to start to uh, stir this in now I'll, I will ordinarily stop and uh, take uh, recordings but I'll just I'll be just reading them out and I'll be able to grab them off the video for my graphs which I'll show you later so we're starting, we're starting off with uh, 6.5 on the pH meter. Uh, if you're really serious, I'm not going to bore, you, bore the heck out of you by doing this very, very slowly. Um, but you may just very quickly see, even just with a few drops, I'll try and bring that close so you can have a look. You can possibly see already there's a, there's a precipitate forming in there. Uh, just even from a small amount. If I continue to stir that, that may even, even dissolve again, re-dissolve, uh, because really this is a reasonably strong solution and, and around each drop that you put in it is quite strong. And so you get this precipitate coming out of solution. So I'm going to pull this down to even just 10 mil and just take a reading for you. We really should have been designed with three or four hands. I'm making my own mechanical stirrer, which I'll use. So this is 9.3 already. You will find that it will, it will approach a resistance. Uh, we're taking this as up to about 10.7. So now it's going to take this down to 50 mil in the solution. stirring fast but I've got it fairly vigorous. Don't just stir it all in one direction, change direction occasionally. Keep mixing up properly. I'll give you another look. It's starting to come quite milky now it looks like looks like skim milk now. Keep dropping it in. As I say ordinarily you go quite, uh, quite a bit slower. But I can just see it's just fast drops going in, occasionally a slight run. Okay, coming up to 50 mil now. 50 mil. 
9.3 before. So it's only sitting at 9.5. So you can see what I was saying about resistance. We went from 6.5 uh, to 9.3 on, on the first 50, uh, 10 mil and all the way to 50 mil and we're still only at 9.5. So I'm just drop this next 50 mil in. So we're looking at 9.7, 900 mils, 9.7. one mil, remember this is 0.1 of the other. So 10.6, fluctuating down to 10.5. I'll put another whole mil in, so now I'm up to 0.2. That's stable on 10.5. Put another two I think in, so now I'm up to 0.4. You often find this that reactions will go one way or the other when you get towards the end. They may accelerate and try to go past your end point. And if you see it going up, you re might really have to uh, put some acid in to bring the pH back down. And that's where you need some 10% uh, acid as well. Just You don't want wild swings, you just want to be able to control the reaction. So we're fluctuating 10.6 and 10.5, so we're having it influence. Uh, put another 0.1 in. I think we're up to 5. But I'll I won't bore you to tears, I'll just chug away at this. I'm going to keep it at 10.6 uh, to 10.7 until it stabilises. Right. Hopefully you can see that. Reviews 10, 20, 35 plus two. So plus the other hundred, it's 137 mil. Well it was during my lunch hour that I set it up. Um, oh by the way that number there I just give every every test a number and keep track of it in my little book that way. Don't get things mixed up. So it's, we're about six hours settling. I would normally leave it overnight. But now, now you can see why you need such a large container because um, it does produce a large amount of precipitate and we do need to, to wash that. Now I should overlay the, lay the reactions on the screen. Our sample is full of magnesium and potassium are the two largest components uh, in our target zone. And that's mainly what that white warmness is made up of is magnesium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide so the sodium's grabbed hold of the magnesium uh, off of the or it grabbed the chloride should I say and left it as a hydroxide which is precipitated out and the same with the potassium so that water in there has now got extra sodium and extra chlorine in it so it's sodium chloride which is regular table salt salt. So now we're going to be washing that out. We'll drain that out and we'll wash the precipitate because in between the precipitate is a lot of uh, salt as well. So before we go any any further we'll wash that and I'll also be, just rack that off and fill the whole thing up. So I'll just show you what we do there. So first of all let's put a mark where the precipitate's up to because that is and such a small uh, amount on the first the first one and I'll just use this syringe and I'll be careful not to dip it too far and suck up some of my target material. Now a lot of people are taking this, they're ingesting this once they've washed it of course 
and anecdotally what they're doing is they're having a teaspoon or two twice a day um, I don't think it'll really hurt you most people are deficient in magnesium in any case but I can guarantee you it's not it's not all M state and um, if there is any M state at all in uh, dead sea salt which is what this whole exercise is about to prove or disprove long term then uh, it'll be the smaller part okay all right well, I think that's enough so but I won't be doing that method when it's full it's just a quick way with this amount so I'm simply going to fill it up with filtered water and so the effect of that is going to be uh, to dilute the remaining remaining salt so there we go simple as that and I'll leave that overnight and we'll be able to see where it's up to in the morning as well there it is settled overnight uh, you can see it's uh, settled back down to the mark um, Usually put a, a, I usually put a W and a 1 so I keep track of how many times I've watched, washed it if I've got different projects on the go. So I'll just show you quickly how to rack this off. I've just got a little piece of hose from the hardware store, a little garden tap from the hardware store. And if you're doing this over a sink, you can just have the tap open, pre-prime it, your hose like that, put some water running out, turn it off, and you can just dump this straight in like this and turn the tap on at the same time and that will drain out very quickly now I won't, won't be necessary to get every last drop out uh, but I'll, I'll get as much as I can out if you go too close that almost is very much like there we go, wet yoghurt uh, so kind of like really thin cream and so I'll just take it down, I've got about a centimetre there uh, off the off the ormus and straight into the second wash. So refill it. Okay, and leave that for for another day. It's been, it's been washed three times. You can see from the mark there that we haven't lost any precipitate. And so now we're at the stage we're going to add hydrochloric acid and take the pH, it was originally uh, 10.7 and we're going to take it all the way, all the way down to near, near 1. Well, our old goal would be to clear all of that. We're using hydrochloric acid, this is already 30% made up. And we put it into handy little containers um, and one of them reduce it by another down to 10%. Uh, for the fine adjustment at the end. You find the reaction will go very quickly towards the end. So my trusty stirrer. See that? Look, it really is like a fine yogurt. You can feel the stiffness of it. Maybe a, maybe a cream. And I'll get myself organised here. Okay, so I've started off with 100ml. We've got 9.4, 9.3. Now hydrochloric acid will fume, so when it hits the water, uh, a fine vapour or spray comes off. Sometimes you can actually see it, depends on the temperature of the day. Keep your head well back. You don't. You don't want to be breathing those fumes. Some people kind of waft around. Nine point one at thirty mil. Okay, we got forty mil. And nine point oh. to one there. Seven. Twelve. 
So 0.5 there, so I think we'll stop there. And I reckon that'll clear. The solution is stable at 0.7, but there's a hazy little precipitate down the bottom which sometimes happened, and it's not desirable, so we'll rack that off. And as you can see, I've got a little plastic tube arrangement. And if you hook up a syringe on the bottom like this, then you won't have to suck it out through your mouth. And it's just above the precipitate if you just pull the syringe out and you can drain it away into a new container. Well, after five minutes, you can see the precipitate already forming, the solution clearing. I think you can see. No, you can't quite make it out swirling. Maybe you can make it out swirling in there, but it looks like there's about two centimetres. That will compress right down, so considerably less. Remember, this whole thing was pretty much precipitate. Uh, so now the magnesium hydroxide should be in solution, and that is material M or X, um, supposedly. Now it's settled, it's probably about 15 hours. Less than a centimetre in the bottom, which is quite normal. So now I need to wash that uh, three times because it's only a small amount of precipitate. You wouldn't necessarily need to wash it three times in such a big container. Um, but there is whatever magnesium hydroxide was there is now present as magnesium chloride in that solution. So there was a lot of it, you'll remember, so we need to wash all of that away. Now these are our graphs. You see, first of all, we've precipitated magnesium up to 10.7. Magnesium is by far the greater content of Dead Sea salt. And if there was any uh, potassium precipitated, I'm not sure if it would have, but I do know that um, potassium is soluble in pure water. So as we began to rinse that off, then any potassium hydroxide would have dissolved in water and gone back out. So we've got rid of the two greater ones. And of course, uh, sodium chloride, uh, the next greatest was also going off in the wash. So when we've redissolved the magnesium, we've got uh, magnesium. Now, the other thing I'm not totally sure on is calcium, but there is only about 0.2% calcium in Dead Sea salt. So uh, there's a possibility of calcium uh, still being in solution. I'm still to check that out, but it won't change my overall opinion. Uh, next, we have then uh, re-precipitated and you see the amount of precipitate we've we got. Um, it is possible there is some calcium in there, but it doesn't account for the full volume of it because it was only 0.2%. So that's not, not a huge amount. Like 1% of 150 grams would be 1.5 grams. So 0.1 would be uh, 0.15 grams. So 0.3 grams is all that could uh, count for that. So so we do have something, whether it's uh, the so-called M-state, um, that's uh, something for further investigation, but we have got something that's very interesting.